Hi guys, this video is going to introduce you to passing arguments into your scripts in PyCharm. If you haven't tried PyCharm yet, I encourage you to check it out. You may encounter this IDE in a professional setting. Its structure and tools are useful for larger programming projects. This video covers the specific process of passing user arguments. For more information about getting started with PyCharm, you can head to jetbrains.com slash help slash PyCharm and introduce yourself to PyCharm using the Quick Start Guide. One of the useful features of PyCharm is that all the scripts we create are stored in a PyCharm project. Projects are groups of related scripts with common settings. Most importantly, they share a Python interpreter. I'm going to go ahead and create a new project now. It's going to be created with my default interpreter. Additionally, projects store settings that define how scripts are run and debugged, known as run debug configurations. Within each project, we can have multiple run debug configurations and switch between them to meet our code testing needs. Available run debug configurations are shown in the top right corner of the IDE. When you create a new project, you'll notice that there are not yet any run debug configurations in place. If you create a script in your project, you can still run code without a configuration by right-clicking the name of the script in the project files and selecting Run. Notice that this script has printed Hello World in the Run window. This is a simple script requiring no arguments, so it runs successfully. In the process, PyCharm has automatically created a new configuration, which we can access in the top right corner. Notice that the run debug configuration has been named the same name as the script. In this case, it's called print test. Let's take a look at it by selecting edit configurations. With the print test configuration highlighted on the left, we can see the configuration settings. The first setting is the script path. This configuration points to print test.py, so that's the script it will run. We can set different configurations to run different scripts. Since we only have one script in our project, we'll keep it on print test.py for now. Notice that we can also set parameters or user input in the box below. It's currently empty because we have not set any arguments. Luckily, none were required for this version of print test. Let's try adding a script that requires arguments. This script imports the built-in module sys and uses sys.argv to access a list of the arguments in our configuration. In the sys.argv list, our first argument will be in index position 1, and our second argument will be in index position 2. I'm going to go ahead and clear all of the configurations from this project. Now let's try to run this script in the same way as the first, by right-clicking the script name in the project folder and selecting Run. Notice that an index error has occurred on line 5. We can tell that from the traceback message. Let's look at the configuration PyCharm created. The default configuration has no arguments specified, so Python cannot find any value in the sys.argv index positions we specified in the script. Now let's add one argument. I'll click Apply and then OK and run the script again with the print args configuration. We get another index error, but this time in line 6, because our script did find the first argument. Now let's pass two arguments separated by spaces. I and click OK, and run the print args, args configuration again. Our script ran successfully. Finally, let's try passing in two arguments without spaces. Now 
Notice we have another error. That's because Python treats both arguments as one when there are no spaces between them, and it can't find a second user argument. Keep this in mind when you start passing full path file names into your script arguments. Try to anticipate what might happen in your script if your file name includes a space. Now let's take a look at how we might use multiple configurations within one project. Let's say we have a project like this one that includes multiple scripts. We might have a configuration for each script in the project. Here I have two very similar scripts in one project, concatenate.py and multiply.py. Concatenate.py concatenates two string arguments with the space between and prints the results. Multiply.py casts two arguments to integer, multiplies them, and prints the result. To properly run the scripts, I need to set up a separate configuration for each. As you can see, I have a configuration that points to concatenate.py and specifies arguments for that script, and I have a configuration that points to multiply.py and specifies arguments for that script. Keep in mind that your active configuration does not change when your focus changes from script to script. If my active configuration is concatenate, it will remain active whether or not I'm focusing on concatenate.py or on multiply.py. This can lead to some confusion if I now click the Run button. The configuration has run concatenate.py successfully, as shown by the results. Always make sure you have the correct configuration active for the script you want to run. Now, let's say we want to test one script with two different sets of arguments. For example, I may want to have two configurations for multiply.py. In that case, I can copy the multiply.py configuration, rename the new configuration, and change the arguments. Click Apply to save the settings. Now I can easily switch back and forth between my multiply configurations. In the first configuration, my arguments were 2 and 4, and my result was 8. In the second configuration, my arguments were 3 and 7, and my result is 21. Again, always make sure that you have the correct configuration active for the arguments you want your script to use. Finally, there are other environment, execution, and pre-launch settings we can define within each configuration. We've left those as defaults for now, but you can explore them to determine when it is appropriate for you to use them in your own projects. I hope you found this video useful and you'll take the time to explore PyCharm on your own.